Dressed up like Eskimos, everybody knows I'm darky and some mistletoe. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, I hope you all have been having a good run-up to the holiday season. I hope it's been as fun and exciting or as quiet and subdued as you could hope for in these crazy, ridiculous, weird circumstances we are all finding ourselves in uh, this fall, this winter. Uh, honestly, I have not been able to get really into the Christmas Christmas spirit this year. Granted, I'm not a hugely Christmassy, Christmassy person to begin with, but still, it seems to have been extra anticlimactic this year, uh, about as, as anticlimactic as the approach and passing of Thanksgiving was uh, a few weeks ago. It's almost like, you know, the Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, I was kind of like, oh, w was that Thanksgiving? Oh, okay. Uh, but hopefully it will not be as much of a non-event as Thanksgiving seemed to be, at least for me and my family. If that's what you like, you if you like a big thing, a big Christmas, uh, hopefully it will be one for you guys. Uh, hopefully those of you who hope to visit your family uh, will be able to do so safely and, uh, you know, without uh, spreading the, the you-know-what uh, more than has already happened. But oddly enough, as strange as it might seem, uh, in spite of my difficulty in mustering up the holiday cheer this season, uh, I have gotten a bit more into Christmas music this year than I usually do, uh, although perhaps that's a direct result of the fact that we've all been mostly cooped up in the house and away from all the usual distractions and stuff of the holiday season. But anyway, uh, and kind of relating to what I was just talking about here, as you can kind of see by the frock around the frame here, uh, this is the first of two holiday videos that I will be doing this year. Uh, I will be having my holiday now and then video, which uh, I, did, I did one last year, so I'm kind of trying to make it a tradition. Uh, that one will be coming up very, very soon, within the next couple of days, obviously. Uh, but first, there's this one, and this video is actually a blend of two ideas I had. Now, uh, for first of all, uh, the first idea is, those of you who have been watching my channel for a while, and my bargain bag videos in particular, uh, may remember that a few times over the past year, I have pulled a Christmas or holiday CD out of one of the mystery grab bags. And instead of listening to it that month for the breakdown the following month, as I usually do, I set it aside, since I really can't get into Christmas music at all until basically after Thanksgiving. So that's what I decided to do, and I explained it at the time, setting no CDs aside, and uh, eventually to do uh, with the goal of doing a holiday bargain bag breakdown video. And as for the second idea that has culminated in this video, uh, several months ago, uh, what started out as just a silly comment by me on a friend's Facebook post uh, ended up with this friend, a certain retired former record store owner who shall remain nameless, uh, gifting me by mail with a box of assorted random holiday CDs, which was amazingly generous on his part, although I'm guessing it was just leftover stock from his store that he had absolutely no idea what, he, what else he was going to do with. Now, I had actually filmed the opening of that box, uh, which was a lot of fun because uh, aside from one CD, I didn't know what else was inside it, uh, intending to upload the video around this time with quick reviews of each of the CDs after I had listened to them. But unfortunately, I ended up accidentally deleting that footage, and by the time I remembered I had done so, it was already wiped out of my computer's recycle bin. So yeah, I guess that makes me a little bit of a... But anyway, uh, for a while I had just decided to write off that idea. It's like I kind of ruined it by deleting the footage, and I was just going to go with that holiday bargain bag breakdown video. But then I remembered, uh, recently, just in the last couple months, that there's a song out there called The Twelve Days of Christmas. So I decided to uh, salvage, as I could, uh, the other idea, the second idea there, by combining the best of that gift box with the bargain bag CDs that I had uncovered, and do this fun, festive, not quite sing-along little video in my own charming, whimsical, Tom's Hit Parade kind of way. So anyway, I invite you to just sit back and enjoy as I go dashing through these 12 CDs of Christmas. On the first day of Christmas, the CD played by me was Northwest of December by Don Latarski. Now this guy is a, uh, a local artist and he's pretty popular in the Eugene Springfield area and I think throughout most of Oregon, uh, possibly through the entire Pacific Northwest, I'm not sure to be honest. But uh, yeah, he's uh, basically an acoustic solo guitarist 
and yes yeah, this is very very pleasant music and this is of course his holiday album and it's full of about uh, half of them are originals and half of them are uh, traditional songs and stuff uh, Good King Wenceslas, uh, Silent Night, God Rest You Merry Gentlemen and a couple of other uh, you know, well-known uh, uh, Christmas carols and stuff, and the rest of them are originals. Uh, perfectly pleasant stuff. Uh, he's he's very good at uh, guitar. Is an excellent guitar player. Uh, it's just solo acoustic guitar has never really been my thing. So this is uh, perfectly decent background music, but honestly, not much more than that to me personally. Just my own particular taste. So uh, yeah, but still not a bad holiday album, and it was a, a, a nice listen. On the second day of Christmas, the CD played by me was Christmas with Yolanda Adams. And you might recall me unearthing this one in a bargain bag recently. Uh, very nice uh, album, very decent stuff. I had never uh, bothered exposing myself to the, the music of Yolanda Adams before, but she is a, a very good R&B singer, uh, kind of a mix of traditional and contemporary R&B, uh, which is as uh, this album is as well. Uh, a handful of originals. Uh, but uh, mostly it is uh, traditional songs. Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas is the opener. Very, very nice. And uh, The First Noel, Silent Night, Oh Holy Night, uh, The Christmas Song, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. So yes, uh, almost actually it's almost entirely uh, carols or traditional songs. And she actually does a medley of Carol of the Bells and What Child Is This? So, so yes, a very pleasant album, I, I thought. Uh, yeah, just uh, very nice. Yolanda Adams has a wonderful voice. And uh, yes, uh, if, if you like R&B Christmas music, uh, a, a blend, as I said, of uh, contemporary and traditional, more on the traditional side with this, with these being uh, more traditional songs, very, very good album. On the third day of Christmas, the CD played by me was Christmas Interpretations by Boys to Men. Uh, I'm a fan of Boys to Men, uh, not a huge fan, but I have a, a few of their albums, I think. And yeah, this is very nice. To be honest, uh, I have never been really crazy about contemporary R&B as a genre for Christmas music. It's just it, it, it's the genre that I least like when it comes to Christmas songs be done, being done or arranged that way. But this was a, a good album. I mean, it's boys to men. I mean, come on, there, you know you, you you can only expect excellent vocals from boys to men. And uh, these are all original songs uh, except for one song. They do an interpretation. Actually, the intro and the closing track are interpretations of Silent Night. Everything else pretty much is uh, originals, uh, and, and that, in a way, that kind of detracts a little bit from the enjoyment of this album for me. Uh, as I said, you know, not a huge fan of contemporary R&B when it comes to Christmas music, but still a, a, a very decent and enjoyable album. I, I found a lot to like on this one. Not a huge fan of it, but I intend to hang on to it and uh, re-listen to it uh, every Christmas from now on. Uh, so yeah, very, very good album. On the fourth day of Christmas, the CD played by me was... Aaron Neville's Soulful Christmas. And yes, I have just recently come to appreciate Aaron Neville as an artist. I found, and I can't remember if it was in the budget bin or if it was actually on the freebie shelf, uh, his Greatest Hits compilation from years ago. And I had forgotten in listening to it, I'd forgotten how many great songs he had done, he was responsible for. So uh, I was kind of happy to receive this one. This was one of the ones in the uh, gift box from my friend. And yes, much more enjoyable than I expected it would have been. A uh, bunch of great songs on here, and again, a, a mix of tradi traditional songs and uh, what I believe are originals. I'm, I'm not totally sure. There are two songs, and again, I'm not sure if they are either or both are originals or if they had been done previously by someone else. But two songs really stand out on this album. Such a Night, which is a, kind of a bouncy, feel-good Christmas song. Wonderful, wonderful song as well as Louisiana Christmas Day, which is another one and that kind of has, as the title suggests, kind of a, uh, a Cajun or New Orleans spirited, uh, soulful kind of a, of a, a feel to it. Just a great, great song. Uh, and I mean, this whole album is just excellent. Lots of carols on here. Um, oh, Holy Night, Silent Night, A Little Town of Bethlehem, as well as some uh, old school classics, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, uh, the Christmas song, obviously, Please Come Home for Christmas. Uh, so yeah, you know, more on the soul side, as the title suggests, than on the R&B side, you know, but he, he is kind of a, a mix of a soul and traditional R&B artist. Uh, one of the best artists, one of the most un underappreciated, I think, artists in, in the grand scheme of things. So yeah, very, very good, fun, enjoyable album. On the fifth day of Christmas, the CD played by me was by John Legend. Uh, yes, this is a six-song EP, uh, Sounds of the Season. Uh, it was, as you can see here, a, a promotional deal uh, in conjunct conjunction with NBC. 
and a very, very enjoyable album. I've been wanting to, I've been a fan of John Legend for several years now, many years now, and uh, I've been wanting to pick up his more recent uh, full-length Christmas album. I have not picked it up yet, but uh, this is a very good uh, little preview, a little taste of what may be to come on the album. This one, I don't think this one has, uh, his new album I don't think has any of the stuff from this. This was made back in 2006, so it's been around for quite a while. Uh, don't know how easy or difficult it is to get a hold of, but uh, yeah, I happen to uh, come into a possession of it. Uh, a couple of originals on here, It Don't Have to Change is one of the songs on here, featuring the Stevens Family, which I think is a gospel group, a gospel vocal group, and Jesus What a Wonderful Child, I think that's an original, I may be wrong on that, and the other four songs are carols or traditional songs. So a very, very pleasant, very nice mix. I mean, with John Legend, you almost can't go wrong, really. So yes, very wonderful uh, little EP. On the sixth day of Christmas, the CD played by me was Miracles by Kenny G. And incidentally, this was the CD that started the whole uh, gift uh, box thing from my friend there. And yes, this is one of Kenny G's three holiday albums. And yes, I suppose you could argue that, you know, a holiday album by Kenny G is not very distinctive. Uh, it's instrumental for one thing, and it's, you know, smooth jazz saxophone, which is, you know, you swing a dead cat and you could hit a, a smooth jazz saxophone uh, CD. Nowadays, but uh, there's obviously a reason that Kenny keeps cranking these out. It's because uh, people keep buying them. And yes, it is, I will have to admit, it is very, very pleasant holiday music to listen to. You know, not the stuff that you really pay attention to, but it's wonderful background music for just, you know, making a holiday mood around the house. You know, a nice, quiet, formal Christmas party, maybe. And uh, this album gets extra points from me because it has the Hanukkah song. I am not Jewish, but I, I always give extra points for any album that includes uh, holiday songs from faiths other than Christmas. Why not? I mean, you know. This, you know, of a very good album, lots of, you know, mostly traditional uh, songs. It has green sleeves on here, which is not found on a lot of holiday albums, I don't think. So, but yeah, and it also has Brahms Lullaby, which is another rarity on Christmas albums. So, points to Kenny G for including a couple little twists on, on the holiday album formula with this one. So, but yeah, still very, very, very pleasant and perfectly enjoyable album. On the seventh day of Christmas, the CD played by me was... A Christmas Together by John Denver and the Muppets. Gotta say, I have a huge soft spot for this one, mostly because of my sister. Uh, my sister was a huge fan of the Muppets, the Muppet Show, the Muppet movies, and all that stuff. So uh, whenever I listen to this CD, even look at it, it reminds me of my sister. So that alone is reason enough to have it. Uh, it's a fantastic little album. And for some reason, it was not in my sister's collection. Yes, I actually got this from the gift box uh, from my friend that I mentioned before. And yeah, it's... Uh, wonderful songs. I mean, of course, all of your favorite Muppet characters make appearances in these songs. Just wonderful. Uh, the 12 Days of Christmas, as kind of is the theme for this video, that leads off the album and it's just wonderful. Uh, you know, Miss Piggy is, is her own uh, sealing the spotlight uh, herself in that song. The one real standout for this, uh, for me for this one, though, the one that really caught my ear, is a song called Christmas is Coming. And I don't know who originally did that song or what, but uh, it's fantastic. And, and of course, John Denver you can't really say a whole lot about John Denver because he's not a hugely uh, unique star, but he's he's dependable. You know, take that as as good or as bad as you want to take the context of being dependable as a musician and a singer. But he is, you know, he is himself in this album. It's just he he only adds to the album's uh, niceness, I guess you'd say, uh, if you ask me. So yeah, a wonderfully pleasant and fun Christmas album. If you want a fun Christmas album and you don't have this one yet, uh, what's wrong with you? Pick it up. On the eighth day of Christmas, the CD played by me was One Wish, the holiday album by Whitney Houston. Now, first of all, right off the bat, it's Whitney Houston. I mean, come on. How can you possibly go wrong with a Whitney Houston album? Trick question. You can't. So yes, Whitney is her fabulous, flawless, amazing self on this album. Uh, I did myself a real disservice by not having this album until... Uh, just the past year. I don't know why I overlooked it, because it is just amazing. I mean, it's uh, almost entirely, I believe it's almost entirely covers of, you know, traditional hymns and carols and, and uh, tradi traditional songs and stuff. Uh, the First Noel is the song that she opens with on this album. Fabulous. Uh, Little Drummer Boy, she does a duet on Little Drummer Boy with her daughter, Bobby Christina Brown. May she rest in peace as well. Uh, that family, I mean, one after the other is gone. Uh, such a 
tragedy. And she does a French version of Oh Holy Night, which is, uh, you know, you know me in French songs, uh, another score for this album. But yeah, fantastic, fabulous. If you don't have this album by Whitney Houston in your holiday collection, again, what is wrong with you? Go pick it up. It's just, it's just wonderful. Uh, this was put out in, uh, I believe, 2003. Yeah, 2003. So yes, it's, uh, yeah, fantastic. It's Whitney Houston. What can I say? On the ninth day of Christmas, the CD played by me was Christmas by Chris Isaac. Now, I tried to get into Chris Isaac's music years and years ago. I, I sampled a couple, of, a couple of his albums, but for some reason, he just did not click with me. There was something about him that I just could not get into, and I don't know if it was my frame of mind at that particular time or what, because this album uh, really pleasantly surprised me. I enjoyed it so much more than I thought I would. Uh, Chris Isaac, for those of you who don't know him or are not familiar with him, most of his catalog falls within the classic rock, rockabilly kind of thing, you know, classic rock and roll, rockabilly sort of thing, you know, with a little bit of a, a swing, slightly bit of a country uh, beat to it. So yeah, just uh, expect fun when you put this album on, if you haven't yet. And bearing his style in mind, it would not surprise you at all to know that he covers the Elvis Presley classic, Blue Christmas, on this album. That just fits right into his, uh, his thing. And uh, this is a, an album of uh, just about half originals and half covers. Uh, he covers Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. He covers mostly the upbeat Christmas uh, songs, uh, uh, Meli Kalikimaka, which is it kind of fits. You would think that that would not make sense for him to do that, but being an, a traditionally upbeat song, it fits with him. Uh, uh, Santa Claus is coming to town. He does that one. Uh, one thing that I, one song that I'm kind of surprised was not on this album was Jingle Bell Rock. You would think that that would be that would be fit right in with his is uh, in his wheelhouse, but it's not on here. But that does not detract from the enjoyment of this album. As I said, this was so much more enjoyable than I was expecting from Chris Isaac, and now I'm going to have to delve into his back catalog to see what I was missing, what I didn't hear in his music the first time around. So it's it's just this is fantastic. If you want a fun upbeat party album for the holidays, on the tenth day of Christmas, the CD played by me was. Home for Christmas by Amy Grant. Now, those of you who have been following me for a while, you guys know that Amy Grant is one of my favorite female vocalists of all time. A little odd, though, because uh, her, her home genre, I guess you'd say, is Christian music, and I'm not a fan of Christian music. Uh, she had some big secular hits in the 90s, though, which I'm a huge fan of. But yeah, this was a very, very wonderful, pleasant holiday album. I mean, I would expect no less from Amy Grant. I mean, that voice, come on. Uh, this is almost entirely, I believe, uh, uh, traditional uh, songs, you know, covers and stuff. Uh, she does fantastic jobs, particularly on Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, and It's the Most Wonderful Time of the Year, and I'll Be Home for Christmas. Uh, but, I mean, every song on here is just wonderful. She just does such a great uh, song, just such a warm, beautiful voice uh, to put on Christmas songs. Uh, just, you know, I, you can't go wrong. Just like you can't go wrong with a uh, Whitney Houston album, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with a an Amy Grant holiday album. It's fantastic. I'm thinking of, I think she's put out, I, I believe, three holiday albums, so I'm very strongly considering uh, investigating, investigating her other two for the upcoming Christmas holidays. On the 11th day of Christmas, the CD played by me was My Holiday by Mindy Smith. And you might recall me uh, unearthing this one in a recent bargain bag just a few months ago, I think it was. Uh, but yeah, this one, kind of like the Chris Isaac album, this one was a very, very pleasant surprise. I enjoyed this one so much more than I thought I would. And uh, I had I was not familiar with Mindy Smith before listening to this album. I, she's recorded uh, several albums, three or four, I think, but I've never listened to any of them until this one. And yes, this one is a, a mix of about two-thirds of it are uh, you know covers of traditional uh, classic Christmas songs and uh, uh, hymns and stuff, and the other third are originals. One of the originals that really stood out for me was Santa Will Find You, and it you know, sounds like maybe a little bit creepy, but uh, no, the, the, it's a very, very wonderful song, very enjoyable, and uh, a couple of the covers really caught my ear. Uh, she covers Away in a Manger, and the thing that makes that one different is she sings the lyrics in a, a melody that differs from the original arrangement, the original composition. Uh, but that does not detract at all from the enjoyment of the song. In fact, it, as I said, it, it makes it, uh, it it catches the ear and makes it a little more interesting, a little more enjoyable. And uh, she also does a cover of "I'll Be Home for Christmas," and that one is is interesting in the fact that it is one of the more upbeat arranged songs on the album. Most of the songs on this album are are fairly mellow, but "I'll Be Home for Christmas" is one of the few songs that's done in a full 
rock band, you know, a full electric band arrangement. She doesn't rock out on the song. It's just, you know, the, the instrumental arrangement is kind of like a full rock band. So that, that just make, kind of makes it uh, interesting, in a way, as I said. So, but yeah, this is a very, very nice, very enjoyable album. If you haven't upon it, uh, I recommend it strongly. So yeah, very, very wonderful holiday album. Everybody sing. On the 12th day of Christmas, the CD played by me was A Jolly Christmas from Frank Sinatra. Although here on this on the cover it's titled The Sinatra Christmas Album. Though as you can see on the CD itself it is still titled A Jolly Christmas from Frank Sinatra. I don't know why there are different titles on between the CD and the front cover, but anyway, what needs to be said about Frank Sinatra and his singing, uh, his the rest of his catalog is just as wonderful and enjoyable as his holiday standards, his holiday songs. This is a wonderful album. It was originally put out in the 50s or maybe the 60s, and this uh, album actually has two bonus tracks on it. But yes, fantastic. I mean, you know, as I said, what can be said about Sinatra uh, that hasn't already been said? Uh, Jingle Bells, The Christmas Song, uh, Mistletoe and Holly, that's, I don't know if that was a a song that Sinatra put his stamp on or not, but uh, it's it's a classic, and Sinatra's rendition of it probably uh, speaks to why it is now a classic. But yes, not a song to be missed on this one. Uh, it's just wonderful from top to bottom, as could be expected, as you would not expect any less from Frank Sinatra uh, for a holiday classic album. I mean, the holidays wouldn't be the holidays without hearing at least some Frank Sinatra holiday tunes, honestly. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, I guess that about wraps things up, Christmas pun intended. That'll do it for these 12 CDs of Christmas. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a happy and safe holiday, everyone. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.